Hi, welcome. Thank you for joining in our ongoing journey through this time in our history. Through its changing times and seasons, punctuated by secular holidays and the Jewish ritual year, it feels like I should be saying, welcome to November. I'm not entirely sure why, except that the weather seems to have taken a colder turn. And this is our last week of daylight savings time. I, for one, always regret the loss of our longer days and greatly look forward to their return. This is the season that brings to us and much of humanity, holidays of light, comfort, warmth, and festivity. It is those images that sustain many of us during these darkest days of the year, anticipated celebrations and the gatherings that go with them, gatherings of family, friends, colleagues, and coworkers. Interestingly, this week's Torah portion speaks to us of family, of the earliest days of the Jewish family, it begins, these are the generations of Isaac. While it goes on to describe the relationship of our patriarch Isaac's sons, Jacob and Esau, the Hebrew words, Ela toldot, these are the generations, evoke all kinds of reactions from us. As I shared with you last week, I had my own Ela toldot moment as my son married this past weekend, and please God, will one day parent his own tolda, his own generation. As the late Rabbi Lord Jonathan Sachs pointed out, it is because Judaism focuses on this world, not the next, that it is the most child-centered of all the great religions. Children, are our immortality. But we are not all destined to have children. And this can be a very painful issue, particularly in the Jewish community, where there is still an expectation, despite the independence and self-determination of so many of our young people, there is the expectation that they will nevertheless find a partner, and have children. This is where I found what Rabbi Sachs has to say so helpful and even revelatory in a way I had not thought of it before. He wrote, the rabbi said that the good we do constitutes our toldot, our posterity. Let us pause here for a moment to take our break to breathe with the thought that the good we do constitutes our told out, our posterity. So let's take our meditative positions and find our feet firmly planted on the ground, our bodies attentive, but with a sense of ease and let us do a bit of internal inventory as we try to let go of all the clenched muscles in our bodies. I realized this last weekend that excitement, that nerves, even of a good kind and excitement and anticipation and emotion find their expression in lots of held muscles. Um, it's almost like we just hold ourselves together as we go through these, um, these moments that can be quite, quite moving, quite impactful. So let us let go of all these held, heldnesses. I wonder if that's a word inside of us and even outside of us, our, our um, shoulders, our necks, our heads, our jaws our arms and hands, let's unclench the hands. Let us lay them in our laps. Let's let go of our tummies if we are holding on to them for some kind of dear life. I think many of us do 
I think I have probably offered the possibility that many of our digestive ailments are not helped by our stressed internal organs. We go further with our thighs, our knees, our calves, our feet. We can move our feet up and down and wiggle our toes and just try to give a big let go. I've already closed my eyes. I invite you to do the same or to softly gaze at something upon which you are not focused. If there's extraneous noise, please try to ignore it. It's coming from the rooms around me. Um, so let us just pause for a moment and then take, take that deep breath. Filling up from top to bottom, or even feeling as if the breath has reached your toes and is coming up from there into the rest of you. Let's hold on to that good feeling for a moment. And just focus on it. Focus on how your body has just expanded. You've allowed it to just be filled with, with breath, with life, with energy, ultimately. And then after holding it for a few seconds, we let it go. however that feels best to you. And just a word of a clarification, even though it, the breath tends to energize us, it simultaneously, the action of bringing breath into our bodies can make us feel like we want to yawn. Um, first of all, the relaxation can do that, but it's, a, um, it, it, it's, a, it's an instinctual response, don't, don't be concerned although try not to fall asleep. <laughs> Many people do when they meditate. That's not the point of meditation. But it is one of the um, occupational hazards of it. Let's breathe in again. And breathe out. And we might try to concentrate as much on the breathing out as the breathing in. <clears throat> breathing out carries with it its own sensations and is a real kind of letting go. And we can rest at the bottom of the exhale. Just for a few seconds. And then bring it in again. And we might even think almost as a mantra. That our deeds the goodness we bring into the world is our posterity. Even if we do have children, we are not off the hook. What I love about this formulation 
that it is the good that is our posterity, is that it is accessible to every one of us and essential for every one of us. It also affirms that what we do in this life, how we behave, how we comport ourselves, matters. Even the smallest things we do to brighten another's day, to help lighten another's burden, to open a door, carry a package, share a kind word or a kind smile. All of these every day even instinctual behaviors make the world in which we live a better, less harsh, less random, and seemingly uncaring place to be. This also means it is never too late, and it does not have to be difficult or complicated. As the book of Deuteronomy states quite clearly, this is not in the heavens, making it impossible to attain. It is also not across the seas, making us feel as if we must exert a Herculean effort to access the possibility of doing good. No, the text tells us it is very close to you, in your mouth and in your heart, so that you can do it. And because we are hopeful, and optimistic and are desperate to make this world better for the next generation. We believe that it is never too late. The possibility of good is always available and always welcome. I was moved yesterday by a posting on Facebook that acknowledged the 19th anniversary, I believe it was the 19th anniversary of a father's walking into AA, Alcoholics Anonymous. I identify the person as a father because it was his three-year-old son and his own recognition of his neglect of the child's needs that propelled him to finally go. He has been grateful for the decision ever since he made it, and he never looked back once he took the plunge. He never looked back, even in the aftermath of that same child's tragic death 18 years later of a kind of leukemia. He acknowledged two things in particular that struck me. The first, staying sober is a daily decision which made me think, just like choosing goodness, is a daily decision, a daily, a moment by moment action, choice, choice for you. And being sober allows him to be present as it did for every day of his son's illness and eventual journey to death. He also acknowledged that it allows him to be a force for good and present for others, especially his wife and daughter. Again, I drew the analogy to the goal of meditation. It is just a technique for helping us to be present in and for our lives, a state of being that with every possible technological distraction seems to be in danger of becoming extinct. With that in mind, that possibility of becoming extinct, being present, I would share with you two small details from my son's wedding. At his and his fiance's urging, at the very beginning of the wedding ceremony, before anything else happened, the rabbi said something to the effect that she was quite sure that everyone was looking forward to being present for every moment of Jonathan and Zoe's wedding. And to help that happen, she invited everyone at that moment to take a picture. 
and then to put all of their phones and cameras away so that they might be fully present for what was actually happening in that moment in front of them. It actually was a wonderful moment with everybody snapping away and then someone suggested Jonathan and Zoe should do a selfie of themselves with everyone gathered behind them. The second thing that struck me in the aftermath, because I did not realize at the time, but learned two days after the wedding, there was no videographer there, either to intrude upon or distract from what was happening, or to allow anyone the excuse not to pay attention because of the thought that they could watch it on video later. What we do and how we behave matters. That is how we ensure our posterity. We can be alive to the possibility that each moment presents. We just have to be present for it. So let us continue to breathe. And let us focus on the breath coming in and the breath going out again. Because that is how we are training our minds to stay present here, now. The breath only goes in right now. And then it goes out again, right this second. This is what I believe is called real time. Imagine there's real time and there's not so real time, unreal time, manufactured time, recorded time. But real time is where we are. It is where we always are. And we are training ourselves to stay with real time. It occurs to me that when we are in the presence of someone who is truly grounded in the moment, truly there, all of them, we know it and we feel it. And we want to be there in that person's presence. Because we know or we understand that we are the only ones right there in their attention. And they tend not to ask us questions we have just answered. They tend to be able to carry a conversation forward based on what we have said. It makes us feel that we are being seen, we are being heard. And oftentimes, depending on the conversation, it makes us feel that we are in the presence of an understanding heart, a 
compassionate soul. A thoughtful, sensitive, even wise human being. I've been in conversations with people or been a participant or listened to exchanges where one of the individuals will ask a question that has just been answered. And it becomes so crystal clear that that person wasn't, just wasn't listening, wasn't paying attention. The person or people in front of that person were not important enough. weren't interesting enough, whatever. That's the negative judgment. Sometimes people really are legitimately preoccupied. They've just come from a difficult situation. They are about to face a painful one. That, there is no question. That goes on all the time. But sometimes we come across people who just aren't paying attention. So let us focus, let us pay attention. We can do that with our breath, with the inhale and the exhale. And hopefully we can do that with a dear friend or even a stranger with a sibling, a spouse, a partner, a child, especially a child. I have heard stories of children who, who just, who say to their parents, please, usually not with a please, put down the phone, put down the phone. Daddy, I'm talking to you, mommy, Pay attention to me. When we're meditating, we have put down the phone. We are practicing. Practicing living the only place we can be. Right here. Right now. In the present. by way of conclusion and reflection for the coming week, I would share with you this poem by Antoine de Saint-Exupéry. He is the one who wrote The Little Prince, the French, the French writer. The title of this poem is Generation to Generation. While it seems to be specifically aimed at a family, a single family, I believe we can extrapolate from it the concept, we can extrapolate that concept of a family to a community, which in my mind is a larger kind of family. In a house which becomes a home, one hands down and another takes up the heritage of mind and heart. Laughter and tears, musings and deeds. Love, like a carefully loaded ship, crosses the gulf between the generations. Therefore, we do not neglect the ceremonies of our passage, when we wed, when we die, and when we are blessed with a child, when we depart and when we return when we plant and when we harvest, let us bring up our children. It is not the place of some official to hand to them their heritage. If others impart to our children our knowledge and ideals, they will lose all of us that is wordless and full of wonder. Let us build memories in our children 
in all of our children, lest they drag out joyless lives, lest they allow treasures to be lost because they have not been given the keys. We live not by things, but by meanings of things. It is needful to transmit the passwords from generation to generation. I believe some of those passwords are embodied in the good that we do from generation to generation. May this week be one filled with good choices, choices for good. May you feel a sense of creating your own posterity in many varied situations. And let us look together to next week as we continue to mark this journey. God bless you. Have a good week. <laughs>